Welcome to Seven Pot Club. I'm Rob. Let's start some seeds in the Arrow Garden. I grow hot peppers. I've had my Arrow Garden Bounty Wi Fi indoor hydroponic garden for a little over a year, and I've used it to grow both herbs and hot peppers. It's really convenient and easy to use, with built in lights, timer, and even reminders on your smartphone when it needs water or nutrients. In this episode, I'm going to demonstrate how I'm now using this arrow garden to germinate hot pepper seedlings. I'll transplant these outside later in the spring. I know some of you have been following my arrow garden journey from the beginning and want an update. So later in the video, I'll rewind and show what's been happening in this arrow garden since the previous update when it looked like this. I'll also show you how I got it cleaned up and prepped for seed germination. Let's get started. My roots are in the water, but I'm reaching for the sky. I didn't purchase my arrow garden for starting seeds, but I was intrigued when I found out a seed starting system is offered as an accessory. Arrow Garden recently introduced an updated line of bounty gardens, so make sure you order the right system for your unit. I'll provide a link in the video description. For my bounty, it cost about $30 on aerogarden.com. I got mine for 20% off with free shipping during one of their frequent sales. As you can see, it was shipped without any extra packaging. I think this is a great practice when it makes sense, as it reduces waste. Time to open the box and see what's inside. In its standard configuration, my bounty can accommodate up to 9 plants, but with the seed starting system, you can start 50 seeds at once. This seed starter tray completely replaces the regular Aero Garden grow deck. Each hole is filled with a grow sponge. Underneath, there's a clear plastic dome. More on that in a minute. You also get a small bottle of the standard Aero Garden liquid plant food. There weren't any instructions in the box, but an online search located an instruction sheet dated 2015. I guess they don't include it anymore. There'll be a link in the video description if you'd like to download a copy. The Air Garden is all cleaned up from its previous occupancy. More about that later in the episode. So now we're going to add water and place the seed starter tray on top. The instructions recommend that the tray rests in the water for 24 hours before planting. This is so the grow sponges can absorb water. Planting the seeds in a moist environment should speed up germination. Now, about this plastic dome. Is it just for protecting the sponges during shipping, or is it meant to be placed over the seed tray to keep in moisture? It's not mentioned in the website description or on the instruction sheet. It's probably just meant as packing material because it won't fit over the tray until you cut out a slot to accommodate the pole that runs down the back of the unit. I don't know why you wouldn't want to seal in moisture during germination, so I cut a slot with scissors and then it fit perfectly. While I'm waiting the 24 hours to plant, I select the seeds to be sown. I have plans for a very special hot sauce project later this year, so I'm growing extra plants of five different varieties. I'm going to start 10 of each variety today. I made up this template in Excel, similar to the one I use for my soil-based seed starting. Look in the video description for a link to download a blank version of this template. I sometimes use other brand hydroponic nutrients, but I think the Aero Garden liquid plant food will work fine for starting these seedlings. I will be using organic soil and fertilizer after I transplant them, but I won't be able to claim they're 100% organic like the seeds I start in soil. Now I'll plant. I'm going to put two seeds in each sponge because seeds almost never have 100% germination. Personally, I just use my finger to place the seeds, but sometimes I'm clumsy. That's when tweezers come in handy. After the seeds are planted, I plug in the Aero Garden and go through the quick plant process. After setting the clock, I choose seed starting and accept the default settings. Then I choose the on and off times for the lights. I've already added water and nutrients, so I'll just click through those pages. That's it. Now I'll wait for germination. About a week after planting, our heat went out in sub-zero weather. I didn't want my seed nursery to get chilled, so I carried the arrow garden downstairs to the living room to be warmed by the gas fireplace. We made it through that crisis. Then I returned the arrow garden to my office and soon the seeds began to sprout. Here's how things look two weeks post planting. 
All varieties are sprouting, with the exception of the seven pot Katie's in the top row. I hope they're just running late, but maybe the seeds aren't viable. Luckily, I'm starting early enough that there's still plenty of time to replant. Already getting some good root growth. I'd hope to transplant some of the extra seedlings, but I'm unsure as to whether I can safely extract them now that roots are peeking through the sponge. I'll update you on that and much more in future Arrow Garden and Hot Pepper Growing Season updates. My roots are in the water, but I'm reaching for the sky. Now for the recap since the last update in July 2019. In that episode, the Arrow Garden was way overcrowded, so I removed two of the four hot pepper plants. After a few days, the two remaining plants dropped most of their leaves, so I harvested all the peppers, pruned them way back, and hoped for the best. Fast forward to November. As you can see, the Mata Frate came back to grow tall and bear fruit, while the poor Cap 214 did not survive its ordeal. I was afraid to further disturb the roots of the Mata Frate, so I just left the base of the dead plant in the unit. I had the lights extended as far as they go, so I had to continually trim back the foliage as it grew into the lights. I could tell from the appearance of the leaves that the plant was very stressed, but since I planned on switching over to seed starting after the holidays, I just kept trimming it back. On day 434, it was finally time to get the arrow garden ready for seed starting. I harvested all the tiny peppers. A normal Mata Frate is roughly a half inch in diameter. These pods were uniformly about an eighth of an inch around. That's a sure sign of stress. Here's the entire haul. I counted and there were 453 teeny tiny peppers in that bowl. I ate every one of them. I had to remove the plant from the unit. The roots were incredibly dense. I just kept hacking away at them until I could pull them through the top and extract the grow basket from the unit. Then it was time for cleanup. It's important to take apart the grow deck to make sure the water channels aren't blocked. As water is pumped from the bottom, it gets sent through these channels to the base of the plants. Sure enough, the channel around the Mata Frate was completely blocked with the roots I'd yanked through the hole. Here's the grow deck all cleaned up. I don't know about you, but I just can't seem to remove all the whitish residue. If you've got a tip, let me know. I should probably take a moment and show you how the Bounty Grow Deck comes apart. There are six tabs spaced around the edge. Firmly press each one toward the center until it releases. The first time I did this, I was afraid I'd break off the tabs, but that hasn't happened yet. Release all six tabs and the two halves come right apart. Next, I siphoned out the murky water and pulled out the pump for a thorough cleaning. Roots had grown deeply into it. You have to remove two small screws to remove the pump's cover. Now, the bowl is all clean and sanitized. The pump is all cleaned up too and ready to be reinstalled. Now we're back where we started. I'm already thinking about what I'll plant in the arrow garden next after seed starting season is over. Herbs? Greens? More peppers? I've got a little time to think about it. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, subscribe to our channel, and tap the bell to receive a notification each time we post a new episode. We've got merch, including our 2019 Grow List poster with beautiful photos of 96 varieties we grew in our front yard pepper garden last year, 7 Pot Club logo merch, plus clever and quirky hot pepper related designs available in t-shirts, sweatshirts, hoodies, stickers, magnets, and buttons. Visit 7pot.club slash merch to learn more. And for even more 7 Pot Club, follow our daily exploits on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. For 7 Pot Club, I'm Rob.